Welcome back everyone, today we are going to make a very toxic pigment called Paris Green or also copper 2 acetate triarsenide. This pigment has been used for painting walls and for making green dresses and it led to numerous poisoning accidents. Without much more talking, let's begin. For this preparation, distilled water, 14.8 grams of arsenic 3 oxide, 8 grams of copper 2 oxide and 20 milliliters of glacial acetic acid were used. The amount of glacial acetic acid used was a huge overkill. Instead of copper 2 oxide and glacial acetic acid, or acetic acid in general, copper 2 acetate could be used directly. For our own safety, safety goggles, gloves and respirator were worn. I don't know if I actually still have 14.8 grams of arsenic 3 oxide, so this reagent is going to be weighed out first. The respirator was already worn during the weighing step because our arsenic 3 oxide is a very fine powder which you definitely don't want to inhale. The copper 2 oxide, which is a black powder, was weighed out next. 8 grams of this chemical were used. The copper oxide was added to a 250ml Erlmeyer flask. If I repeated this preparation, I would use a 500ml one. About 50ml of distilled water were added and this is definitely not enough and we had to add even more later on. 14 milliliters of glacial acetic acid were measured out. Actually, only 11.6 milliliters are needed and we ended up using 20 milliliters. By using copper acetate directly, you can avoid that problem. With concentrated hydrochloric acid, copper oxide would react instantaneously. With acetic acid, this sadly is not the case. To avoid having to wait for days, we are going to use a simple trick. We will have to heat it, but to speed up the heating process even more, a reflux condenser will be placed on top of it, so no vapors are going to escape. By doing this, we don't have to worry about acetic acid leaving the apparatus while the solution is boiling hot. We ended up refluxing for 3 hours, adding more distilled water and some more glacial acetic acid, and at the end there was still copper oxide left. If you look closely, the blue color of the copper acetate can still be observed, but we turned off the hot plate and not going to wait any longer. In order to get rid of the leftover copper oxide, a vacuum filtration was performed. The copper oxide will be left behind in the filter paper, while the copper acetate stays in solution. The flask was rinsed with about 20 ml of distilled water. 100% yields cannot be expected anymore, because copper oxide left the reaction and therefore we didn't get all the copper acetate we wanted. Anyways, we continued, the copper acetate solution was put back into the now clean Erlmeyer flask and afterwards the arsenic 3 oxide was added. The arsenic 3 oxide is poorly soluble in water, yet we need it to react with the copper acetate. To make them react, a reflux was again set up. The contents were refluxed for exactly one hour. The entire reaction taking place looks like this. Copper oxide, arsenic 3 oxide and acetic acid from Paris green and water. We split the reaction up and therefore needed to use more acetic acid. Our formed copper acetate would react in the seventh step to form Paris green, water and acetic acid. As the mixture heated up, it rapidly changed its color from blue to green. Refluxing for an entire hour even allowed large flakes of arsenic 3 oxide to dissolve and react. Nearly one hour has passed now. It's time to stop. Heating and stirring were turned off and the contents of the flask were allowed to cool back to near room temperature. Because Paris green is poorly soluble in water, you are looking at a suspension of Paris green in water and not a solution. Therefore, after turning off the stirring, it quickly settled down. As the hot plate was still hot, some steam was being formed and I filmed this interesting phenomenon. It's like smoke rings made of Paris green. If we did not allow the contents of the flask to cool down, they might start to boil while doing a vacuum filtration, ruining our pump. The problem is not that the liquids would be sucked over into the pump, but that too much steam would be sucked into the pump. If a gas washing bottle filled with a drying agent was attached to the hose, this wouldn't be the problem and we could also filter while it's still hot, but I didn't do this. After about 10 minutes the filtration was finished and the flask was rinsed a few times with distilled water. By the way, about the cleanup. All equipment was rinsed with sodium hydroxide solution until there was no trace of arsenic left. Arsenic containing waste shouldn't be dumped into the environment. Not only would it be illegal, but do you really want to drink groundwater contaminated with your arsenic? It might not be much, but do you really want to do this? All glassware was rinsed two times with sodium hydroxide solution and afterwards two times with distilled water. And all of that waste created was collected. The steel fish was removed using a pair of pliers and here you can now see me how I cleaned the glassware using the sodium hydroxide solution. 
The flask was left to stand for a few minutes and it was also swirled around. All the contents react with the sodium hydroxide to form sodium acetate, copper hydroxide and sodium arsenide. Sodium arsenide is way more soluble in water than any of the other arsenic salts. By rinsing it a few times with sodium hydroxide, you get nearly all of the arsenide dissolved and in the end only a small trace will be left. It should be common sense, but I'm still going to say it. The glassware and equipment used for this are not food safe anymore. And there you go, some green, highly toxic copper to acetate dry arsenide, which is still slightly damp. To dry it completely, we are going to leave it in a vacuum chamber next to anhydrous calcium chloride overnight. The next day, it looked nearly the same, but the color changed to a slightly darker green. Some air was let back into the vacuum chamber and we took a closer look at the compound. And there it is, beautifully green Paris green. In reality it's actually a little darker and in the next footage I changed the light settings a little to match the real color. Paris green is also called emerald green because it fairly resembles the color of real emeralds but it definitely resembles the color of emeralds in Minecraft. Under direct sunlight the pigment looks like this. Because of its toxicity it was actually also used as a pesticide in the past. As arsenic accumulates in the environment, this has been a very bad idea. The product was transferred to pre-weighed plastic bag. We ended up with 13.2 grams of Paris green, which represents a 52% yield. The yields could be increased significantly by waiting until all of the copper oxide actually dissolved or by using copper to acetate directly. For aesthetic reasons and for safety, the plastic bag was put into a steel paint can, which has been labeled correctly. I only wore one glove because I didn't want to contaminate the outside of the can, but I still washed my hand very thoroughly afterwards. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to drop me a like and if you don't want to miss out on further epic chemistry content like that, make sure to subscribe. I can't stress that enough, but if you are one of my Patreons, I thank you sincerely. These videos are not cheap to produce and you help me out a lot. If you want to become a Patreon too, check the link in the description. Patreons get early access to new videos and also to an exclusive series. I wish all of you a great day, until next time.